Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the first installment of Spirit Monday. Here we are going to dive deep to learn more about who we are as African people. And uh, in order for us to understand ourselves or our spirituality, we have to go back to the foundation. We have to go back to history and or we have to go back to our roots. Now, if you're not interested in doing that, I respect your wish. Meet me on Tuesday or any other day. But this is for the people who want more, want to dive deeper in understanding more of who we are as African people. Okay, and so today we're talking about all things spiritual. And as we learn together, I appreciate you sharing with me. A lot of research go into this discussion today. And uh, whatever we say here, we want to back it up with truth. Okay. And as we build our foundation with this first video, understand that there is more to come. And we ask or invite the spirits to teach us. It is through our experience we can truly say, I know who I am. Not just I believe, but through our experience. When spirit meets man, we become immortal. Now, over here, I have some notes that I made so I can stay on track. So if I'm looking over here, that's what I'm doing. And um, as African people, you know, it's very important for us to go back to our history because our African ancestral history is very rich and very powerful. But you wouldn't know if you just watch TV or just look at certain forms of education or look at uh, religion, you wouldn't know because... A lot of time our history tend to be told from slavery. No much information given from before that. And after that, we're just still stuck in that very terrible state of mind. So I'm here to say that our history was a very rich, very powerful history. Western and European philosophers form different religious thoughts based on our history, based on our philosophy, based on our rich and beautiful history. So, for example, Judaism, Greek philosophies, European Christianity took concepts from our spiritual belief system to form their own creation story. So if you're in the back, come closer. Uh, Western ideas of God comes from our own concept in Africa and in Egypt in particular. So carved in stones on the temple of Asset uh, on the island of Philly, they took scenes to make up the Western philosophical world. So, for example, Hermes, Trismegistus, and Greek mythology took their story directly from the book of Tehuti. I think it's called Tehuti, T-E-H-U-T-I. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Our ancestry had a study of 42 books of the Tehuti representing science, law, and intelligence represented by a bird. We didn't refer to this bird as a god, but it was a symbolic form of intelligence. So I'm sure you've seen uh, in Ag in uh, Egypt, in those hieroglyphic um, drawings, you'll see the head of a bird and the body of a man. Well, that's where that concept came from. 
The Greek concept of thought, for example, came from Tehuti. Tehuti. It was not associated with the, cre the creation of the physical world in the form of the hieroglyphics. He is also credited with the authorship of the book Amtut. Um, Toi, some people say, which is the book of the dead. This is where the Greeks took the idea of thought. Okay, the cover of this book is covered with hieroglyphics, figures, and symbols. Now, in the book of thought, those who understood the meaning had unlimited powers over the spirit of the air and divinity. Some called it the key to immortality. In the book of thought, and it is lost to our modern world, it's mystery sealed. But the truth is, there are still people who have access to this and employ the secrets for sometimes their selfish gains or the desire to control. But to the everyday man and woman, we have lost or we don't have access to this. Now, the combination of the Greek god Hermes and the e Egyptian god Thought comes from the old Tehuti, writing down the story of our life on earth. Thought is then derived from these concepts. Judaism, for example, took the god Kenum, forming man out of the potter's wheel, out of clay, and then calling him Jehovah, came, and of course, the Genesis story. And I think this is from 250 BC. They took the concept of the atom, the sun. Atom is the sun. And in Edopolis, they focus on the nature of the universe before creation of the world. So the story is documented in the pyramid, pyramid text written on the wall of the pyramids. The creator God emerged from the chaotic darkness of Nus as a mythical Bennu bird. He flew to Heliopolis and the ancient city near Cairo, where at dawn he alighted on the Ben Ben, representing the sun or the ray of the sun. And from this very imagery and story comes the story of Adam, or Adam is then referenced to the same history where, you know, with this mythical bird. Christianity took from the goddess Isis and Horus to make up the story of Jesus and Mary. And if you were to go to Egypt, and you look at the walls, you'll see, you'll still see this imagery etched. You see the concepts etched that are taken and now presented to us as a new religion. And some of the writings or drawings were chiseled out. At one point, the temple was closed because there are individuals who did not want anyone else to have access to that truth. Our ancestors studied nature. Other great philosophers went to Egypt to study. For example, Pythagoras, he describes God as the supreme mind. He studied in Egypt. He learned from the great philosophers of Egypt and out of those sacred teachings, the Greek came up with what is referred to as ceremonial magic and sorcery. The word once used to describe witchcraft, sorcery, black magic evolve into the word we now use for a place where we go to pick up our medication. It is found in the Bible in the original Greek. So witchcraft, Sorcery was once referred to as pharmakia. And in the Bible, it refers to sorcery. Any reference to sorcery or witchcraft 
is referring to the same term pharmakia. Go to Galatians 5 verse 19, Exodus 8 verse 18, Isaiah 47 verse 9, Revelation 18 verse 7 and verse 23. And it goes on and on. All the different references to idolatry, to witchcraft, to sorcery is referring to that word called pharmakia. Now, this ceremonial magic is the ancient art of invoking and controlling spirits by scientific applications of certain or certain formula, or they would say formulae. So, when we think about witchcraft, and in our African spaces, you always hear people lashing out about a person who practices African spirituality, and the first thing they say, this is evil and whatever, but in the Bible, it's referring to the term pharmakia, that ability to use ancient art, um, art form of invoking and controlling spirits by scientific application or formula. And so a magician, for example, enveloped in sanctified investments and carrying ones inscribed with hieroglyphic figures could by the power vested in certain words and symbols control the invisible inhabitants of the element and astral world. So, for example, you know, you know, everything is matter and energy occupies everything. It's all around us, it's in us. And energy can attach itself to even inanimate things. This is why when you get something, you must cleanse it. There's a way to cleanse it. When you go to the store to purchase something, you're supposed to really cleanse it because so many hands touch it, so many energy that is attached to people can then be transferred to things. And that's something we'll talk about in another video. And so what we're talking about here, and let me repeat it, is that people have the power or the ability to use words and symbols to control the invisible inhabitant of the elements and the astral world. The ceremonial magic of antiquity produced many schools of sorcery and black magic. So, in Egypt, it was the greatest center for learning and the birthplace of many arts and science. The Greek went to Egypt to learn the mysteries. They found images that were er erected, and these images are solely symbolic. They were for the study, they were for meditation. Then, theologies created gods to confuse the mind of their devotees. And so what would be erected as a symbol, you know, just for people to meditate and, you know, it represented something, people then started calling it gods, not our people. In North America, the native people have their symbols as well and were at one point, you know, connected to the cosmic agencies which manifested around them. They refer to Mother Nature as the great spirits that helped them to, nav to navigate this world. Mother Nature, you know, nature for the most part as the First Nation people of the African people. There was nothing dark or demonic about our spirituality and the practice thereof. But with the introduction of other you know, nations and people, they found a way to demonize what was ours, even though they learn from it and still use it. So in Western philosophy, we hear that it is okay to worship someone who is our, you know, went out on a cross, born without any, any you know, intimate contact, will come back in a little while to deliver us from this earth. And these thoughts are proliferated around the world. We believe our ancestry and our ancestors are 
still with us and still important that our ancestors left us a wealth of information we believe that ogun is the metal ogun is a metal we know he is the hunter we know zeus is shango we know death happens and is elegba in control we are seen as mad when we see these things and say these things but we forget that sorcery and witchcraft was and still is pharmacia there is nothing dark or demonic in our spiritual beliefs and practice as we give others the right or the opportunity to pursue their own thoughts and to you know practice their own religion we have to allow others within our group without our within our community to practice to research to learn so a lot of what is told to us a lot of what we hear a lot of what we say is pure ignorance it's very difficult to shed that sort of brainwash because even someone who have tried to get away far away from some of those beliefs you know some of those ideologies we still use the language it's very difficult because you know being a christian for 30 40 years being a person in your 60s and that's all you know of course that's the only language but can we use that as an that as an excuse not to want to know more or to learn the very thing that is demonized is the very thing that others go in pursuit of africa and egypt were play was a place and we're using the modern name for africa because you know some refer to it as Kemet, you know just all the different names i don't have time for that right now we know what the continent that is referred to as africa today and i'm saying that one of the reasons why we're not making breakthroughs that we're not more powerful is because we're so far removed from our truth our connection to our ancestors, our connection to our roots, goes so far. There's so little we know. Now, in general, our mind is asleep. In fact, research is showing that the average person only uses a, a very small percentage of their brain. Imagine if we were able to use up more to receive truth and download and enlightenment some of the things that we get those of us who are spiritual and those of us who have certain kinds of gifts when we see certain truth come to light when spirit manifests itself before us it's just so awesome and we're only getting a little flicker a glimpse a glimpse of what is there just a broken light just as a, a sort of weak flicker of the flame of the light so much more to delve deeper in the point of this video is to say that if you're not open to the journey then do not join and if you're not open to not just take what I share, but to go and search for more truth for yourself and ask that the truth is revealed to you, then you're going to stay stagnant and you're not going to grow in your faith. You're not going to get to see the manifestation of true power as it rests with you and around you. So when you think about obia or sorcery or witchcraft, Think again, your impression of what that really is, is totally wrong. 
you're off base. Do your research. Learn these things. They're available for you to learn. And if you don't know, pray about it. And the Spirit will reveal it to you. I want to say thanks to Rani for some of the research that you did. And always, you know, teaching and sharing what you know as we exchange ideas, as we come upon fundamental truth based on our experience. You know, it's such a blessing to really know you. And as we go further in our study and discovery, I'm hoping that one day you will come forward, whether, um, you know, just audio or if you want to be on the show, you're welcome to come and share your wealth of knowledge. Unfortunately, so many of our people do not know the truth about who they are. They know nothing about, you know, their ancestral past. And so they repeat the same story that doesn't really make any sense. And they will fight you. The vitriol that comes out of these individuals when they're uttering nonsense, you sometimes just have to let them be because the truth is sometimes they can't help it. It's all they know. But there's so much more for us to know. And, you know, in this first episode, we're just just brushing the top just giving you the theory and just philosophy about religion or spirituality or our powerful roots. In another episode, we'll start to look into the different African retention or spirituality. We know everything about Christianity and we welcome anyone who wants to come and have a conversation with us and share what they know with us. But we're not talking about just theories here. We're talking about facts. Facts. And we are not satisfied to accept what is written in just one text. We're not interested because this one text, the Bible, comes from many sources. This is why I still use it and I cross-reference where these information come from. Do you understand? So on this first episode, I know it's a bit dry, maybe not as interesting as you would hope, but we have to do the layers. We are building the foundation in this one. And I'm saying that Christianity cannot be the true religion of all religions when it only started not at the beginning of creation a concept that is taken from other stories as I have said in previous videos you got every religious um, thought and they all have a creation story and it's based on culture the ideologies of that culture and sometimes it draws from other so you know we have latin we have hebrew and you know we have european thought process and uh with for example i think with judaism they also took concept the old idea of kunum god you know and the old revelation story comes from the hieroglyphics in Egypt as well. And then you have the Greek mythology coming straight from there. And you have the European Christianity being derived from there as well. So um, we have to know these things for ourselves. And we should, should not be satisfied. We're just continuing the lies. You just can't. We just can't continue to beat others over the head because they don't believe what you believe. For every, every, every one of you who fill a prescription, 
see it when it's written. Oftentimes it's written away for you not to understand it. Why is that? And I had a note written somewhere and I think I might have lost my notes. But Christianity itself comes from the goddess Isis and Horus as the mother and child, as is the case with Mary and Jesus. This is where it came from. So to dismiss one, you would have to dismiss the other. Okay. Now, I also wanted to leave you with this word, pharmacon, and it means in philosophy and critical theory, it means remedy, poison, and scapegoat. P-H-A-R-M-A-K-O-N. In philosophy and critical theory, it means remedy, poison, and scapegoat. So before you start looking for your own people to demonize, understand where the word witchcraft and source, source, sorcery came from and why we're often scapegoats. Everything that is referred to as black is evil. I mean, a color. The L-A-C-K is a color. It's not a person, but it has personality. It takes on image of a man or a woman. Know yourself. Know thyself. Know your history. Know your roots. Otherwise, you're going to continue to be not just in bondage because many of us are in bondage. Spiritual, physical, financial because we don't know who we are the spirits cannot communicate with us when we're so locked up and locked away in religious thoughts in ignorance and arrogance meanwhile those who gave you these lies are walking in truth that they got from our people, from our ancestors. It's time to shed, shed those lies. Time to go in search of truth. Time to be empowered. So there are times when I use words like God. You know what I'm talking about, and I don't want and I don't want to play semantics, but there's so much more. And so we're going to look at some of the African spirituality. going to dive deep I'm not asking you to change your views on who God is to you if you're comfortable keeping that for those who want to know more for those of us who want to commemorate our history and to remember our ancestors and to walk in their practice we're not ashamed of it we don't want to be 
disassociating, disassociating ourselves from our people and our ancestors, from our spirituality. No. We cannot accept something of 30, 40 years past and living in this thing and we see no breakthrough. We don't understand ourselves and our culture and our people are getting worse. We can't continue on that path. We just cannot. Stay blessed, everyone.